Okay, we're going to be talking about the four pillars. In a previous video, I gave you a rundown on the four pillars of a successful magazine. Those four pillars are design, content, reach, and the last but not least, frequency. So the design is just very, very briefly. But if you get these four things in line, then you will have a successful magazine, irrespective, irrespective of what happens you will have a successful magazine. You will have people clambering after the title and people wanting to be in your publication. Um, and people wanting to buy your publication and people wanting to advertise in your publication. And that's really the secret. That's really all you need. Okay, so, so the four elements are, are design, uh, content, reach and frequency. And just very briefly, design is the look of the magazine, in other words, the visual experience that a reader has, um, and it, and we'll delve into it now because this is what this video is about. the The second one is content, which is the emotional experience, in other words, what pictures and what stories you put in, etc. The third one is is reach, in other words, circulation. Are you getting to the right audience, and are you making sure your magazine's out there and in front of people? So people can comment and etc. Um, and and the last one, of course, is frequency. In other words, how often are you bringing out your mag? If it's an annual publication, then understandably once a year. But anything but an annual, anything after that, you 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 need to at least bring it out quarterly. Otherwise, you lose your brand equity. People forget about the magazine. They forget all the good things about the magazine. So you need to sort that out. Okay. So let's quickly just deal with design. So design is the visual experience and, and I've said in a video before that uh, a, a little story if, if you're walking down the road and um, and it's a rainy day and there's water in the gutter down the road and you see um, a, a torn out page of a magazine and you must be able to recognize what magazine that's from without looking at the page folio number or name or whatever You must just be able to see oh wow If that's the that's from that specific magazine um, And that's that's to do with design so design is a personality a magazine has a personality. It's a visual experience um, um, You know it involves fonts it involves color it involves white spaces. It's how you lay out your pages, etc. And of course, you, you need a uniformity. You need some kind of uniformity in all your fonts. You need a uniformity in, in your, your color usage, etc. And it needs to be adapted to your, your what we call the perfect reader. In other words, the one person who would subscribe without hesitation to your publication is, is the perfect reader. And I'll give you an example of that. If, for example, your uh, magazine is is about um, vehicles, if your magazine is about cars, etc., then then uh, actually it's a bad example. Let me think of a better one. If your magazine is about fashion, if it's a, a female fashion magazine, then your your ultimate reader is, is the fashionist, is the person who buys fashion. So what would that personality, what colors would they like to see on a page? What, etc. You know, one of the magazines we publish is about nails. When I say nails, I mean the nails. So, so um, it's called Absolute Nails, so it's purely for the nail technician. So we use the colors that we use, the of pinks and and neons and etc etc, all the bright fun colors and, and the design and the layout is fun and jazzy and up more and uh, uh, nice and busy etc etc. Whereas another magazine we publish is Businesswoman SA, which is quite a serious magazine for businesswomen. So the fonts we use are, are more serious. Um, it's more content heavy as opposed to visuals heavy um, In other words, there's more words than pictures um, And the pictures are there, there are a few of them, but they're big and bold, etc. 
whereas uh, um, so so because of that your your your, your story content etc you've got to use a font that's nice and easy on the eye uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't exhaust the reader or it's not glaring or anything whereas with um, with uh, absolute nails magazine it's totally the opposite you want colors that jump out you, you've got less script and much more pictures like like you'll have a step by step on, on how to do a specific nail uh, application or treatment or whatever so you have very little words but lots of visuals so you need lots of color etc etc but businesswoman magazine is they, they get lost in the text in the story itself because it's very emotional etc um, and, and that's what resonates with them so so you don't need a lot of visuals etc you don't need a lot of bright colors you just need a pleasing uh, a font choice and so on and so forth so that is the, the first of the four pillars which is design you've got to decide what kind of design you want your magazine to be and there's a very very easy way of figuring that out of figuring out what kind of design your magazine should take and that is simply either a finding a direct competitor especially from one of the big magazine publishers but if you find a direct competitor in your market segment and you pick up their magazine, then you can get a very good idea of what a reader likes. Because obviously if they've been publishing for years and they're the big publishers, then they've paid attention to what their lead readers like design-wise, etc. Alternatively, if there isn't a, a competitor in your market space, or the competitor you pick up the magazine of um, in, in your marketplace, um, if you think that competitor has made a mistake, if you think their design is wrong, you think it's all wrong for the market, etc., then throw away that and the, the alternative, plan B, is to find a magazine that is read by the same kind of reader. For example, a, a, a person who reads Businesswoman magazine, etc., etc., um, and uh, those kind of stories and so on would be an in-between between I'd imagine uh, a Cosmo reader and an accountant so if you take an accountancy magazine and you take a Cosmo which is general woman's interest or maybe woman and home and you have a look at both of those layouts and you find a layout in between the two that is um, th th that is probably how it would be but, but the best is to find a magazine that is read by the same kind of reader and a magazine that's been in the marketplace for a long time because, well not too long, if, you want, if you've got a magazine that's been in the marketplace for 40 years then it's, it's, uh, it's not a given that they've kept themselves updated with design etc etc so preferably uh, and, uh, and preferably from, from somewhere in the world where, where there's enormous readerships so find a magazine that's circulated in New York or in the UK. Um, don't find a magazine that's circulated in some little town in, in southern Russia because they won't have the design, the latest design and font usage, etc. that you need. Anyway, so copying is the best uh, form of admiration, I imagine. So just copy. Just Well, not copy exactly. You've got to tweak it to be perfect with yours. Okay? Then uh, the last thing I wanted to say about design, which is equally important, is, is, is involves the production process, and that is this. Once you've created a template, etc., uh, sorry, once you've decided on your fonts and your designs and that, as you're doing your pages, start using them as templates. In other words, you, you put together your first page and, oh, you're happy with it and it's a wonderful article or whatever the case may be. Remember, design only applies to your editorial pages, your editorial or advertorial pages. It doesn't apply to advertising, eh? Remember that you get three types of pages. You get, actually you get four. You get your, your editorial, which is a, a comment or a opinion about something. You get your advertorial, which is a branded editorial. In other words, an editorial about a product or service that, that brands that product or service and talks about it in a good light. 
Then you get advertising, which is straightforward glorification of product, which is totally different. And then, of course, your fourth one is you get reference, which is like um, contents pages or that kind of thing. Um, and, of course, not forgetting the most important page of the magazine on the planet, which is the cover, of course. You need a good cover to sell your magazine. You need a good cover. So, so that's design and layout, and I'll do a specific video about covers, but, but uh, my last point is that use the template. So if you design, for example, a page, um, or, or an article page, and you're happy with that design, then when you do your next article, open that page, save it as the new article page, and uh, drop in and etc and then tweak it for the new article because the reason I'm telling you this is because when you get into the throes of design and you're hitting deadline you haven't got time to freshly design each and every page you've defined the personality you've defined the character now you've got to make that work good luck all the best with your publishing you get these four pillars right you're a for away